What's good, bros? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video, man. Yes, my voice is gone, but man, we had a good time on a live stream reaction. You know, the show ended off pretty good, or had, it was a pretty good show if my voice is gone. Shout out to everybody that was in the live stream tonight. We appreciate you guys. Shout out to everybody in the UK. You know, you guys were amazing, bros. You guys did your thing. And uh, we really do appreciate the energy you brought the entire show. I'm going to get my thoughts and opinions on Money in the Bank this year. And I enjoyed it definitely for the most part. That was, the most part, there was a lot of good things in comparison to not so many good things. We're going to talk about things that happened, where things could possibly go. So you're going to have to bear with me. My voice is gone, bruv. But it's okay because we're, we're going to get through this. All right, let's start with the men's Money in the Bank. Ladder match, Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura, L.A. Knight, Santo Escobar, Butch, and Damian Priest, Logan Paul, all competitors in this match. And we knew who was the overwhelming favorite in this match. It wasn't even close. L.A. Knight was the biggest fan favorite in this entire match. Anytime L.A. Knight was fighting somebody, they were going to get booed. Didn't matter if it was Ricochet. Didn't matter if it was a baby face. Didn't matter. They were going to get booed. Why not? And Logan Paul was the most hated man in this match. No one wanted him to win. Soon as he came out there, just a course of boos. When he got in the ring, he was the last person to get in the ring. Everyone surrounded him, and they just started giving him the beats. Beautiful sight to see. Threw him out the ring and started fighting amongst each other. Anytime he would get back in the ring, try to get some offense, that's when pretty much they would jump him again and get him back out of there, man. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single spot. Um, this was a fun match. The crowd was hype. crowd was definitely a uh, pro uh, butch at some of, the, some of the moments, at some of the points. It was great. I do want to talk about this one particular spot. This one spot. I, we got to give kudos to Ricochet. Ricochet actually damn near was like the MVP of this match. He did like a springboard launch onto, I think Butch, I don't, I forgot who Butch had in like a chokehold. He had somebody in a chokehold. I think it may have been, uh, I'm not sure if it was Logan Paul or not, but the ladders were set up. I forgot, you guys know. The ladders were set up where the ladder's in the middle of the rope and it's connected to the ladder that's in the middle of the ring. And Butch was choking somebody laying on the ladder. Oh, and now he's just choking them out. And all you see is Ricochet do a springboard flip onto both men. Beautiful spot. And I want to, once again, I got to say, Ricochet was definitely MVP of this match because there was a, a very big spot where pretty much you have Ricochet and um, I believe you have Ricochet and Logan Paul on the ladder trying to fight to, you know, get to the ladder or to the to the briefcase. And I believe LA Knight ends up pushing them. Now, I don't think they were close enough to the ropes because it, it, it turned into a botch because when they fell, they fell on the ropes and they're holding each other. Ricochet is trying to still balance on the ropes because they were supposed to probably springboard off the rope. And then there's two tables that were set up outside of the of the ring area. So, obviously, they were supposed to probably fall on the rope springboard and maybe fall through the table. But they were teetering. And kudos to Ricochet for still getting Logan Paul. And he was still able to flip them over onto the tables, through the tables. Um, he ended up low-key saving Logan Paul there. Because, once again, kudos to his amazing balance. He was able to save that botch. And they still went through the table and looked brutal. I believe Logan Paul was cut up. And that's when you kind of knew whoever was going through that table spot, they were going to be out the match. And Logan Paul and Ricochet were both out the match at that point, which a lot of people were happy about a whole bunch of holy shit chants because that was insane. Once again, Ricochet, very fantastic in-ring competitor, being able to save that botch and turn it into a holy S moment. It was amazing. Um, so at this point, LA Knight is doing the, the run. He's 
throwing people out the ring. He's knocking people out, you know what I'm saying, out the ring. It looks like he's about to win it. The crowd's going crazy. I'm going crazy. I'm like, oh, he's about to do it. Then Damian Priest comes out of nowhere, throws him off the ladder, and Damian Priest is your Money in the Bank winner. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not upset with that. I didn't want it to be Logan. I would have loved it to be LA Knight. I think a lot of us wanted it to be LA Knight. But Damian Priest winning, it's not bad. It is not bad at all because of the story they can tell with that. And they're starting to plant those seeds. And we're going to get into that match later on, if you know what I'm talking about. But overall, this was fun. Go watch this. Like I said, I didn't go through spot for spot. Go watch this match. Great opening way, opening match to the show. That's when I knew, okay, we about to have a good time tonight. Crowd was hot. And I'm okay with Damian Priest winning. LA Knight would have been the obvious choice, and I think no one would have complained. But Damian Priest winning, that could be something good. We'll see what they do with LA Knight. I do think they need to get him a noticeable win, and I think a good win for him would maybe be to be the United States champion. What y'all think about that? Let me know. Hopefully they can set that up because he does need a huge win at some point. So Damian Priest wins money in the bank for the men's side. Great. All right, so we get into the next match. Women's Tag Team Championship match. Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler versus Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan. Did I care for this match? Absolutely not. I just, I didn't care. Um, I, I just wouldn't have invested or whatnot. They still didn't have the NXT titles with them, so I don't know if they're only, I guess, did the NXT titles just get fused into the women's titles and will never be seen again? Who fucking knows? Or would they only defend it on NXT? I don't know how that's going. I mean, they, they're they undisputed champs now. I don't fucking know. But they weren't seen. Just the, the, the main roster tag team uh, championships were seen. I didn't care for this match. I'm just being honest with you. Majority of the match, they were just working over Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan's getting beat the hell up. I'm talking about beat the hell up. As we expect from Liv Morgan, a lot of times she, she was getting beat up. Um, there was some few moments where Raquel was, was able to get some good offense in. But the story was really just them targeting Liv Morgan and giving her the beat. But we're not here to talk about that. I think most people are here to talk about the surprising swerve that came out of nowhere. And Shayna Baszler blasting uh, Ronda Rousey in the back of the dome piece as she's about to go finish off Liv Morgan. She, out of nowhere, she tags herself in. Shayna Baszler just hits her in the head and then starts giving her the beat out of nowhere. Crowd is shocked. Everyone's shocked. Liv is shocked. Ref is shocked. And then she just walks out. And then Liv goes for the pin. Gets the one, two, three. And we have new women tag team champions in Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan. Out of nowhere. Now, I do remember vaguely they were planting some seeds with uh, Ronda and Shayna having some type of tension there. I do remember that at some point, if you guys remember. But I then I think I think Shayna ended up getting hurt or something like that. So they had to derail that. And then they came back and then they went for the, the tag titles or something like that. Well, they ended up winning the tag titles. So they were like on good terms again. And... I do vaguely remember that, but they haven't, outside of them teasing it months ago, they haven't really brought up any dissension between them. So it just literally, off of storytelling, it just came out of nowhere. She just said, you know what? I don't like you, Rhonda. Cook Patrick. And then that was it. And you're just like, well, I'm for them feuding because I think a lot of us wanted them to feud. But we just got there so randomly. So that's the only thing I can give criticism for is the fact that the match just, she just randomly turned on her tag team partner, which cost her the titles. And there's no build up to it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, crowd was chanting yes. And thank you, Shayna. I think Shayna is going to be more like a face in this because people are still going to boo Ronda. Ronda's not going to be a baby face here. People are still going to not care about Ronda. People are probably going to care more about Shayna. So I'm very interested to see what happens. It's just how we got to that point. It was kind of a weird way. If they would have started building this up for a couple weeks, 
like maybe Ronda keeps tagging herself in to get the victory and Shayna's like okay or maybe Ronda is the one like answering you know cutting her off in interviews you do something like that subtle and then it makes sense when she finally just cut Patrick's her you know what I'm saying so but other than that I didn't really care for this match the only interesting thing was Shayna giving the beats to Ronda Rousey so we're gonna see where that plays out going forward the Intercontinental Championship match, Gunther versus Matt Riddle. Um, I was really expecting this potential to be match of the night. I think this is one of the weaker matches Gunther has had, especially uh, on a on a pay-per-view event. It was still a solid match. It was definitely enjoyable. I like the fact that, once again, Gunther doesn't need his henchmen to get the job done. He legitimately went out there and gave Matt Riddle the beats. It was a hard-hitting match for sure. Um, it really seemed like Gunther still, even when Matt Riddle would have some type of offense, Gunther always had a way to counter it. He focused on a Matt Riddle's uh, taped up ankle. That was the focus, tearing up the ligaments in his leg. That was his focus. He didn't even beat him with his finisher. He submitted him. And the way he submitted Matt Riddle was, but I've never seen Matt Riddle tap out like that. Like, once he put him in, like, he was, like, some type of modified knee leg bar, bro. Once he, and it looked brutal. Once he sat down in it, like, lay down in it, Matt Riddle was rising in pain. And then a second later, he's tapping like a madman, just tapping away. And once again, he, it's the story was working on the injured leg. But he beat him clean. He beat him clean. No help. He beat, he beat him. He submitted him at that. So that was a very interesting one. It was a decent match. And, you know, enjoyable for what it was. Um, but uh, I was just very surprised on, you know what I'm saying, how fast Matt Riddle tapped. But, obviously, the highlight of this whole little segment, match was solid. Um, but hearing Drew McIntyre's music hit, and Drew comes out there to an amazing pop, amazing standing ovation, confirms that he, they, uh, him and WWE has decided on some type of contractual agreement. So, he's back. And boy, it was a beautiful moment to see. Crowd was very into Drew McIntyre. Drew walked right up to, to Walter. Uh, well, Gunther, Gunther not backing down as I expected. He's like, you want to go or whatever. And uh, I believe Gunther ends up shoving him or whatnot. And and we get it going. You know, Drew ain't, Drew ain't no joke. He hit him with his little head butt. Hit him with the kick. The three two one crowd chanting pop hit him with the kick he was over he was out you know laid out then he picked up the intercontinental championship and he raised it above his head crowd going crazy i think we know where his next feud is gunther versus uh sheamus at uh SummerSlam. the question is I, I'm obviously that's gonna be a big high profile match the question is do you have Gunther lose? Is it time for him to lose? I wouldn't have a problem if Sheamus won it. Him being an Intercontinental Champion, I would not have a problem with that. The question is, if you do have Gunther lose, you got to you gotta be thinking next main eventer. Like, you got to be thinking World Heavyweight Champion. That's the only thing I can think of. He has to be, uh, there's no, oh, let's go for another mid-card title. No. The only thing left for Gunther is to become world champion. So we'll see how it's going to play out, how they're going to book it. Will he end up falling to Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam? But I do think that's going to be the match, and I do think that's going to be a real good match, and I'm looking forward to it. But overall, um, uh, Matt Riddle, Gunther, it was okay match. Uh, it was definitely hard-hitting. was very surprised how Matt Riddle ended up submitting, and um, Drew McIntyre, Letting it be known, he wants to run the smoke with Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. All right, Cody Rose versus Dominic Mysterio. Now, this match, I was really concerned with for one reason, because it just seemed like Brock Lesnar was going to come back and cost Cody this match. But surprisingly, that didn't happen. This was a pretty solid match, as I expected. Crowd booing the everlasting... <laughs> <laughs> just booing this man into oblivion i loved it i loved it so much anytime dominic comes out there getting booed cody pretty much as you expected 
dominated, you know, Dominic, no pun intended, at the beginning of the match until there was some Rhea Ripley shenanigans. And then that's when Dominic was able to capitalize. He's a chicken shit heel. It makes sense. They were building up some good heat. But once again, I was not expecting this to happen the way it did. I was not expecting Cody to hit him with the crossroads one, two, three. Relatively, wasn't even a long match. I'm thinking, when's Brock music going to hit? Never hit. He beat him. Beat him clean. Well, I mean, obviously, he's baby face, but there was no extra interference. It was a little bit of interference with Rhea Ripley, of course, but he still beat him. One, two, three. That was it. Crowd went crazy for Cody, as, as you expected. And then that was it. No Brock interference, nothing. That was it. I was just like, um, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it was cool to have Cody on the show. I don't know if this needed to be at Money in the Bank, to be honest with you. The only reason why I it, it made sense in my head, and I think a lot of people's heads, because we're expecting Brock to come out there and screw over Cody to help Dominic obviously will get the assist off that because at the end of the day on paper we don't expect Dominic to win clean we don't expect Dominic to you know beat Cody in a sense unless there's some help and outside of Rhea the only other help now I would think that would really impact the match would be Brock but we didn't get that maybe we get that coming forward I'm sure Brock will return and probably tag Cody at some point. So I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But honestly, with the finish of this match, I don't think this shouldn't have been on the show. Honestly, probably could have cut this match because this is a match you could have had on Monday Night Raw. In my opinion, it wasn't like a must see. It was okay. But, you know, that's just my personal opinion. I was expecting extra storyline to be added to this match for it to warrant it to be on the pay-per-view. But hey, people got to see Cody. So I'm okay with that. It was a good atmosphere. It was okay match. Not something that you got to rush back to see. But, you know, very interesting that they didn't do anything with Brock here. So we'll see what happens. Then we got John Cena, Mr. You Can't See Me Man, comes out of nowhere. Crowd goes crazy. What not? And basically, John Cena's there to, you know, kind of hype up the crowd in his cool seeing john cena get cheered in the uk there was no john cena suck chance or nothing no booze even michael cole and wade barrett made made mention of that like anytime john cena was in the uk back in the day they were booing this man to oblivion remember the hbk Shawn michaels match Shawn michaels versus uh john cena i believe it was in the uk one of the best Monday Night Raw matches of all time. That UK crowd was pro Shawn Michaels. Definitely wasn't pro John Cena. Go watch that match if you hadn't. One of easily one of the best, easily one of the best Monday Night Raw matches of all time. HBK John Cena in the UK on Monday Night Raw. Fantastic. They let them go out there. And they always boo John. So to see this love, we've come a long way. <laughs> we've come so far to see the love John got tonight. It's fantastic but he's basically out there to pretty much promote the idea of wrestlemania coming to the uk i said this after clash at the castle there needs to be a wrestlemania in the uk i'm here for it Let, let's get it going why not let's do it and john cena was pretty much the spokesperson of getting that idea out there they would be fools if they didn't do it they'd be fools if they didn't do it Get it out there. Get get WrestleMania out there. People will pay for it. People will travel to see it. I, we in the States don't give a damn if it starts at 2. We're going to watch that show. That's my opinion on it. Then Grayson Waller comes out there. Get some cheap heat. It didn't really mu do, do much. Crowd Shannon shut the fuck up. Crowd wasn't trying to hear nothing. Uh, Grayson Waller had to say, I think his segment a li went a little bit too long. It was too long-winded. I wish he would have got straight to the point in what he was trying to do. Basically saying WrestleMania should be in Australia, which could be a good, interesting thing. Maybe later down the road. Uh, you know, not a bad idea. And then, uh, you know, John Cena's like, nah, I'm good. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need your assistance. 
if we were to have WrestleMania in Australia or whatever. Kind of no sold him. Didn't really care about him. That's when Grayson Waller attacks him or whatnot. And then John Cena, being John Cena, hits my boy with the FU. I believe they actually called it the FU, not the attitude adjustment, which is beautiful to hear one, one more time. And with the FU, crowd goes crazy. Simple moment. Just to see John Cena out there, surprise appearance was pretty cool. And the idea of him uh, potentially, you know, well, the idea of them having WrestleMania in the UK, come on. That's that's a that's a that's a moment I am hoping that they do. So we'll see if we can get that happening, guys. But dope little segment. Or what not to break up the the uh, you know the the pace of the show got the crowd definitely hyped. Then we got the women's Money in the Bank uh, ladder match: uh, Zelina Vega, Becky Lynch, Zoe Starks, Bailey, EO Sky, Trish Stratus. Um, obviously, uh, Zoe Starks and Trish they were gonna gang up on Becky or what not, um, and uh, Damage Control was ganging up on Zelina. Um, this match was, it had some high spots, hot spots, high spots, can't talk. Um, it was in good, enjoyable moments. It was, it was definitely some, uh, there was some sloppy, sloppy in-ring stuff, some botches, some things that didn't make sense. Like fucking, I believe Zelina Vega was on one ladder and Trish was on another ladder and they were fighting and then Trish falls to the other ladder and then she lays there as Zelina was able to walk on her to get to the other ladder to grab the briefcase. It was a lot of nonsensical moments. Zelina just stand, staying under the ladder, even though she can easily just lift it up and move herself. It's just a lot of things that kind of take you out the match. But overall, it was still some good stuff. Crowd was definitely heavily uh, for EO. Um, there's this one moment. I, I got to mention this. Uh, I'm not sure what you call the move. Sunset flip, I believe, where Zoe starts at the top. Zelina's on the other side, you know, fighting for the briefcase. Zelina flips over, I believe it's sunset flip. Flips over, because the ladder is, once again, bridge. You already know there's going to be a crazy spot. She flips over. And, bro, Zoe starts as a champ for take, taking that spot. It's like... Her head and neck region got caught up in the ladder as they bounced off of it. Bro, brutal spot. Shout out to the ladies for willingly taking that. I believe at some point, Trish Stratus looked like her nose may have been slightly broken. She had a bruise on her nose. It looked like it was broken, so kudos to her being out there. Becky Lynch trying to fight off Trish and Zoe. There was handcuffs brought in uh, by Zoe. They were going to handcuff uh, um Becky Lynch at some point, but she was able to fight them off or whatnot. There was another stiff spot. Becky Lynch pretty much uh pretty much hitting her, you know. Uh I don't know if it's her that's a if it, that's her uh finishing move or not, but she gets she gets onto the table or whatnot. There's a lot of bridge to the table in the ring, the announcer's table, gets Trish and just slams her on her as she jumps off. It's the fact that the ladder didn't give. And Trish just bounced off of it, spine first. I was like, ooh, that looked brutal. She damn near was taking out the match from that. That shit definitely looked brutal. But we got to talk about what we all was kind of expecting. So, EO is like the only one in the ring. She's climbing, she's climbing. Crowd's going crazy. And then all of a sudden, Bailey pushes the ladder, which causes EO to fall all the way out the ring. Crowds booing. Bailey looks like I had no other choice. So she's setting up the ladder. That's when Becky comes out there. Becky still has the lat the the uh, handcuffs one part cuffed to her. So they're fighting on the ladder on opposite sides. Here comes EO. EO comes in between them and cuffs the other handcuff, the other side of it, to Bailey. And then now they can't move. They can't climb up. They can't move. EO climbs over Bailey, sits on top of the ladder, grabs the briefcase, and is your women's money in the bank winner, bro. And I love that. I love that because the story is now being told. EO is tired of Bailey trying to think for her and do things, you know, she thinks is best. She took matters into her own hands. 
EO got pushed off the ladder by Bailey. Bailey EO came back, said, okay, bet. Tied them both up with the handcuffs, climbed over Bailey to become the new Money in the Bank women, uh, Money in the Bank winner for the women's side of things. And crowd went crazy. Crowd chanting, you deserve it, because she does deserve it. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do here. Obviously, they're not gonna, and I'm glad, I hope they don't, but they're not gonna rush her into maybe cashing in. I would love to see her cash in on like a, well, I think she's a, is she a, a, a Raw a superstar? I believe so, yeah. I don't think she's on SmackDown. I mean, she can cash in on anybody, really. But it would be interesting to see how they do it, how they play it out. I would love to see her maybe cash in on like an Oscar. That would be fucking lit. I don't know. But right now, the story they're going to tell is the, the, the dissension in damage control. Now, she is the Money in the Bank winner. How is Becky going to feel about that, that she did that to her? It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. They may even build up a few during SummerSlam, which I'm okay with. So we're going to see how that plays out. Looking forward to it. Should be something interesting. I'm glad they're building storylines with the Money in the Bank winners. They're just not random guys. They're building storylines that play into their factions, and I appreciate that. And speaking of that, we got to talk about the World Heavyweight Championship match. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. Finn came out there serious had a cool little mask on he's very serious he's there to give out Seth some more of the beats or whatnot of course Seth comes out there crowd going crazy with his his chant his whoa going crazy with it per usual crowd was very electric and this was a good match this was very entertaining it was a lot of back and forth. Definitely some stiff shots here. The story was Seth Rollins had the little Kinesi tape. Kinesi, uh, yeah, the Kinesi tape on his ribs. So he's still selling that because Finn Balor's been giving him the beats for weeks now. So he's selling the, the soreness of his ribs. And that's what he's trying to avoid, the stomps. And Finn is trying to avoid getting curb stomped. So all it is is just them trying to avoid each other. But eventually Finn gets the upper hand. And he starts giving, you know, starts attacking the rib area. And for for a lot of it, actually, well, not a lot of it, for, but a decent part of the match, Finn looks like he's in control and he's know what he's doing. But Seth Rollins has those moments of flurries where he's able to counter and, you know, reverse things, you know. So what is really interesting about this match, we didn't even get no music. We just see Damian Priest walk out there with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Now, Seth Rollins is looking at him like, yo, what's happening? And he could cash in tonight to make it a triple threat match if he wanted to. He's just walking around the ring. Seth is distracted by it. He's just walking around the ring. Seth's like, yo, what you about to do? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Finn, uh, Damian Priest, he just sits by ringside. Just with the briefcase. I like that. It's very interesting he came out on that match, but I like that. So, obviously... Seth is getting distracted by that, which Finn takes advantage of. And Finn starts giving out the beats like he's been doing for weeks. He hits him with the stomp he, uh, on the ground, the, uh, the coup de gras. Then he runs to the other side, jumps off the steel steps, hit him with the coup de gras again, throws him in the ring, uh, hit him with the drop kick. And then um, he's about to go pretty much for the coup de gras off the top rope to seal the deal. Because at this point, it looks like it's over. Like, legitimately, it looks like the match is over. But then Damian Priest gets up. And it looks like he's about to signal to cash in or something. And then Finn stops. Because he's looking at him like, what are you doing? And obviously, him stopping gives um, Seth Rollins an uh, opportunity to capitalize on that. To hit him with the uh the one, two, three on the curb stump, boom, and that's it. And Seth retains. But the interesting thing is why Damian Priest caused that distraction. Like he was about to cash in. And you can hear when Finn Balor comes to, you can hear him arguing with Damian Priest. Bro, this has been seven years in the making. What are you doing? Were you coming after me with that? Like, what are you doing? Damien's like, I was coming after him. Like, are you sure about that? Like this, it's that dissension. And that's what I like. The story now is 
where do Damian Priest allegiance, where does it lie? Because he's money in the bank now, winner. Was he going to potentially mess up this match for Finn Balor? He ultimately did inadvertently. So I like that. That was very entertaining. I like the story being told there. Definitely a good, good match. I enjoyed the match. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Judgment Day going forward. And finally, the main event. Bloodline Civil War to Usos versus Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. And I just must say, you guys, you guys in the crowd, you guys showed out. Thank you so much for making this main event that much better. You guys showed out. Fantastic. The entire match. That promo package was beautiful. Fantastic promo package. Three years in the making. One thing I, I wanted to make mention is the fact that they said this on SmackDown. Jay said this. When's the last time you've been pinned? It's been three years, right? Same thing was said this time by Michael Cole on commentary. The last time they've been Roman has been pinned was in 2019. He listed off the, uh, the specific date. I believe it was sometime in December, obviously by Baron Corbin. There's a reason why they mention that. They don't mention that for no reason. That And that's when I knew, okay, we're, we're going somewhere with this. They're telling a story with this. Atmosphere was great. Like, just just them, their mannerisms, the way they're talking trash to each other before the match, the crowd is hype, crowd is chanting F you Roman, the crowd is disrespecting Roman, I love it, love it, love it, love it, there was a moment where Jay is about to get into the match, he gets tagged in, and then Roman gets tagged in, and then Jay takes off the finger tape, and then Roman starts taking off, it looks like he's about to take off his glove and stuff like Jay rips off his shirt like we about to get to the nitty gritty that was a good moment I was like oh we we here for a fight and then you can tell this was a personal feud because they weren't really going for pins early in this match it's just to punish and hurt and one thing I do appreciate appreciate about the storytelling in this match was the simple fact that the Usos obviously being a great tag team their moves were most effective when they were tag team moves, when they were doing the hidden tags, and when they were effectively working together. What was helping Roman and Solo, they know they're the powerhouses. So their job was to isolate. Just like in most tag team matches, you want to isolate the baby faces. But in this, they're so strong. Like Solo, they built up Solo as this monster of a human being that both uh, both brothers were having a hard time with him. And there was another good moment. They're planting more seeds where Roman wants to get tagged in. Roman's like, tag me in. That's, that's, that's what it is. Roman's like, yo, tag me in. And Solo, and it was funny because I think Jay was in at the time. And you can hear Jay, yeah, go listen to your daddy. Oh, that was such a good, good moment. And Solo didn't want to get tagged out. It was a nice little tension there. He ended up tagging, uh, Roman ended up tagging in. But I like the scenes they're planning there. This was just a fun match, bro. This was just storytelling at its finest. The slow crescendo build. It was getting so damn good. At one point, it looked like maybe it was over. There was, there was a situation... And this, uh, I got to talk about this pin combination because they mentioned this. Roman had tweeted out the, the WrestleMania where he pinned Daniel Bryan and Edge at the same time. The stack them, pin them situation. He was trying to do the same thing. This was off a combination of the spear and Samoan spike combo at the same time. I was like, oh no, the match is over, bro. I was like, oh no, this is it. This is it. They, they drag both of their bodies on top of each other. Roman's about to pin pins them. One, two, and they both kick out. Crowd goes crazy. I go crazy. We also got to talk about another move that was beautiful, bro. And I think at this point, obviously, the referee always ends up getting injured in these matches. So he's out. But there, Roman's going for the spear. He didn't see the tag. 
and they both hit the double spear on Roman. It was such a beautiful moment. The match would have been over from there. Crowds chanting up to 10. It was great. Love that spot. So, we have to also talk about, so at this point, chaos ensues. Okay, Solo is about to go rogue. Solo is trying to put Jimmy uh, through, through the table. He lays him on the table. He's about to jump off. And then he just jumps off and falls face first through the table, man. Crowd goes crazy. Roman realizes he's by himself. He ends up getting hit with a super kick. Then uh, he ends up hitting Jay with a Superman punch or whatnot. And we think it's over. We think it's done. He goes for the, um, I believe he, uh, I think he ended up hitting him with the spear. He ends up hitting him with the spear. And he goes for it. For the one, two, and Jay kicks out, but he hits him with a low blow at the same time. It was so beautiful. Roman Reigns' expressions throughout this match was beautiful. His frustration. the He looked like he couldn't believe what was happening. Especially, once again, that Samoan spike combo with the spear. I got to mention that one more time because that was a beautiful setup. And when they both kicked out, Roman couldn't believe what was happening. And here... He kicked out, but got hit with the low blow. Rep didn't see it, and he's just in pain. I just, once again, Roman's facials was fantastic this entire match. Even Paul Heyman's facials was fantastic. Solo tried to intervene. He gets kicked off for his troubles, and uh, the CTE boys was back in full effect. They start kicking Roman's dome piece off his head. Just super kick after super kick. Roman's selling them. Then Jay goes to the top. Hits the frog splash while Jimmy's watching for the one, the two, the three. And Roman Reigns has been pinned by Jay Uso in the middle of the ring. The first time he's been pinned in three years. Go watch the match. If you haven't seen the match. My words won't do it justice. There's so much over the match. I'm uh, so much I'm skipping over because it was just it was a lot happening. Go watch the match. This was three years in the making. It started with Jay, and Jay being the one to pin him again. I believe someone has said Jay is technically the first person to actually pin Roman Reigns in WWE when he was with the Shield. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know. But it's still poetic that Jay, the guy that was the initial first member in the bloodline, the guy that's dealt with all the, the BS from Roman Reigns all these years, he's the guy to pin Roman Reigns. And it doesn't hurt Roman because Roman didn't lose to, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> some random. He didn't lose the titles. And... It took a lot to beat Roman. He had to get hit with a secret low blow, multiple super kicks, and a frog splash. It took a lot to get Roman out, to get pinned. I'm here. Let's get it going. I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I think, honestly, the next match should be at SummerSlam. Jay versus Roman. I called it. Jay can be like, I pinned you. One, two, three. I want a match at SummerSlam to end this. Or maybe they do something else. I don't know. Try to convince Solo to do it. I don't think it's still his time yet. Solo's not going to turn just yet. They're building on that. I think Jay being the one to say, hey, I beat you. I can beat you again, but this time for them titles. I think that should be the story. I think that should be the moment and what you can do there. Because Roman, Roman's about to turn it up. Because now he's gotten pinned. He's going to be pissed. He's going to get disrespectful. It's going to get to the point where Roman's going to try to end his career. Because he's like, you know what? Fine. We can have that match. It's going to get very personal. And I the only reason why I say that. Because obviously you're trying to build up the reason why Solo says enough is enough. The only thing I can think Solo would say enough is enough truly is if he's seeing Jay get destroyed out there. And maybe Jimmy's not able to help or whatever. And he finally says enough is enough and he, it's over. Like, I can see Jay probably won't win. 
obviously, they're still trying to build up potentially to something else at WrestleMania. So I don't see him losing to Jay. I don't see him losing to Jay at SummerSlam. But they can build up a story where Solo just, he's he, he doesn't want to see this happen to his brothers. And he finally realizes Roman's true intentions. That he doesn't really care about his family. And he, he turns on Roman. That would be a good moment. I'm not going to lie to you. If Solo turned on Roman at SummerSlam, that could be something good. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I do think the story they're going to tell next. Jay, Roman Reigns, SummerSlam for the titles. Because Jay can say, hey, I'm the only one that pins you. You're not the tribal chief no more. And it's going to piss Roman off even more. But overall, this was a good show. I enjoyed this show, man. Hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts and opinions, man. It's a long video. I had to get as much of my thoughts out as I possibly could. Uh, I'm going to give this show, for me personally, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 show. I enjoyed it. There was some hit or misses for sure. It wasn't anything on the show that was just inherently bad, for sure. Everything was decent, you know, to watch. You know, if decent to really good to watch. There's some things, you know... If you were to watch it back again, we may get some enjoyment out of it. There's, you know, that's just my personal opinion. But there's nothing on this show that's like just god awful, which I can thoroughly say that's a good thing. It's just some things I probably wouldn't just initially go back to watch. You know what I'm saying? Maybe check out highlights or something like that. But overall, I'm going to give this show an 8 out of 10. Y'all let me know down below what's your favorite match for Money in the Bank. Are you okay with the Money in the Bank winners for this year? Where do you guys think the stories is going to go with, um, with uh, I can't think of his name, Damian Priest winning Money in the Bank and what's going to happen with Judgment Day and EO winning Money in the Bank for the women's side of things and what's going to happen with Damage Control. Also, What's going to happen with the Bloodline situation? How is that going to play out? And uh, what was your favorite match from this show? And what you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still your undefeated YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me, bruvs. See y'all on the next one. Peace.